In the last video, we talked about when and why you might need to add a wideband oxygen sensor to your C6. We discussed how the location of the stock catalytic converters pretty much is gonna dictate where in the exhaust system you're able to install the bung that receives the actual sensor element. And finally, we went ahead and dropped the mid pipe from the exhaust system, welded in the new exhaust sensor bung, and then we installed the new sensor element as well as the gauge. If you happen to miss that video, don't worry, there's a link to it right up here. Now I went through the effort to install the wideband oxygen sensor on a temporary basis in the C6 so that I could adjust and optimize the LS2 engine's tune for that complete LS7 air intake assembly that not only includes the new air filter element, but it also replaces the stock LS2 fairly restrictive mass airflow sensor with the newer hard style mass airflow sensor. Keep in mind, since I swapped in the new LS3, LS7 style mass airflow sensor, which contains the intake air temperature sensor, I did need to copy the tables over, and I got them from a 1008 C6 Z06. And if you look at the intake air temperature sensor, the column headings as well as the values in the temperature cell are different. So here's the stock LS2 data, and here's the stock LS3 data. So you can see both the heading and the values are different. And then in the mass airflow sensor, let's go to the high side. Here's the LS2 data, and here's the LS3 data. The column headings are identical, but the values, of course, are different. The C6 and I are planning on going drag racing in just a couple of days, and I don't have a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is quickly take a look at the state of the current tune and evaluate what the current delivered air fuel ratios are at both part throttle and wide open throttle, and then make the adjustments necessary to get the part throttle tuning within plus or minus 5% and get the wide open throttle tuning as close to perfect as I can. Since the only changes I made are to the air intake side external to the engine, I'm gonna focus my efforts to the mass airflow side of the tune and leave the speed density side pretty much alone. In other words, I'm simply gonna recalibrate or rescale the mass airflow sensor table within the tune and leave the virtual volumetric efficiency table alone. If I had done internal modifications to the engine like a camshaft or aftermarket cylinder heads, then we definitely would be tweaking the virtual volumetric efficiency table as well. Now, if you're not familiar with some of the terms that I just threw around, don't worry, I'll include a link to a video right up here, which will go more into the theory and to the definitions of the mass airflow sensor side of the tune and the speed density slash virtual volumetric efficiency side of the tune. And that video should help quite a bit. So for step one of this admittedly quick and dirty tune, I'll go ahead and get the scanner fired up and connected to the C6. I'll get the C6 up to normal operating temperature, and then we'll go for a drive where I'll be as deliberate and smooth as possible with the throttle as we go up and down hills and slowly accelerate and whatnot so that we can populate as many of the mass airflow sensor table cells as possible. <laughs> Here's the data from our first test drive part throttle. Got the long term and short term fuel trims against the mass airflow sensor. Definitely need to pull a bunch of fuel up in this area. So, what I'm going to do is just come here and hit copy. I'll go into the tune. I'm in the airflow area and we'll go to the mass airflow sensor low. And I'm going to click on this and we'll do paste special multiply by half. And that had the effect of removing quite a bit of fuel. And I'm also going to go back to the scan. And I'm just going to go ahead and take out 8% all the way up to 5,800 as well. And I do that by multiplying this by 0.92. That kind of evens that out. And then we also need to go to the high side because this first cell is a duplicate, 
multiply that by 0.92, and now I'll go back and flash this tune to the Corvette and try again. All right, and here's our second tune. Things are looking a little bit closer than they did on the first one, so we'll repeat the process. Copy, go to the tune, multiply by half. And now we'll go ahead and flash this back to the C6 and repeat the process. All right, I did two more rounds, and this is what I've ended up with, and I can certainly live with this. So now let's move on, and we're going to go to wide open throttle tuning. The only real difference is this time we'll be going from wide open throttle, 2500 RPM, all the way up to 6500 RPM, and we'll be using the wideband oxygen sensor to determine how far off our fueling is so we can make adjustments. Here's our first wide open throttle pull. As you can see right here, we are at a lambda of one, which is about 14.7 on a gasoline scale. And right about here is where I transition to wide open throttle. And it goes to a lambda of 0.86 commanded, which is roughly 12 and a half to one on a gas scale. There's a little bit of a lag because again, our wide band is mounted right after the catalytic converter, but I'm gonna trust it from about this point all the way to the end. And as you can see, we're really rich the entire run. So if I go up here, I've got the error between the wideband and the commanded lambda. And along the whole way here, we're about seven and a half, eight percent rich. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into the tune to the high side of the mass airflow sensor calibration. And I'm gonna multiply the entire table by 0.93, which will reduce the fueling effectively by 7%. I'll flash this into the computer and then we will repeat with another wide open throttle pull. After a couple more wide open throttle pulls, scans, runs, and retunes, here's where we're at. Once again, here's part throttle, lambda of one, which is 14.7. We go to wide open throttle here. We've got to wait about a full second because we have the wide band after the catalytic converter. And I'm getting that time from down here, which is HP Tuner's time, accurate to the thousandths of a second. And from this point all the way to red line, you can see up here at the wideband error, we are at about 1% plus or minus error, which I can absolutely live with. Also interesting to note, I'm going to leave the fueling curve, because this commanded lambda fueling curve is what the computer of the stock tune is calling for. GM is notoriously rich to uh, keep the engine safe. And at peak torque, it's interesting to see here, it's at 0.81 lambda, which is right around 11.9 to one on a gas scale. So we're gonna leave the fueling curve stock for now. That'll definitely be a video for a different day. Guys, I've got a couple of quick things. Number one, this was not intended to be a how to tune video. In my particular situation, I knew that the only changes that were made to the LS2 were to upgrade the air intake assembly, including the mass airflow sensor and the intake temperature sensor. And because of this, I was confident that if I simply recalibrated the mass airflow sensor tables within the tune, that the air fuel ratios would fall into place, and they did. Number two, I'm hoping to do some additional engine mods to the C6 real soon. So I really didn't feel like polishing the tune up now to 100%, which takes time, only to have to redo it in the next month or so as the next mod is completed. Number three, as I mentioned, I'm heading to the drag strip with the C6 in just a couple of days. So I wanted to make sure the tune was close enough, especially at wide open throttle, so I can see what the quarter mile times are. And then of course, compare that number to what stock LS2 C6s are typically known to put down. And I also wanted to get a quarter mile baseline for this car so that after I complete additional modifications, I have a number to try to beat when I go back to the track. So look for the C6 drag racing video in just a couple of days. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe so you don't miss that drag racing video. But most of all, thanks for watching.